Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make some um, centerpieces. And uh, the first one is going to be for my dining table. Uh, I need to change out some of my decor and uh, I want to start with this large picture. And I know that that's an odd thing for a dining table, but I'm going to make a tray out of it because the size is just perfect for my table. And it's always hard to find centerpieces that are large enough for those um, harvest tables. And um, I could use a large dough bowl, uh, but then there's items that, items that I want to set on it that I need a flat surface for. So I've just always wanted a large tray for it. And I guess I could make this out of wood, but this is the easy way. And I'm just going to paint it to look like wood. So uh, I brought in a piece of barn lumber just to give me some idea of uh, how I want the paint to look. So I painted one coat of this brown that my sister mixed up. She just took some regular wall paint and mixed it up into different colors and gave those to me uh, when she quit using them. So I'm just kind of trying to create a wood look here. Now I did that color brown and then I realized I wanted some black in it. And I know you don't really see any black in that barn lumber, but uh, a lot of the old barn lumber has black in it. So I wanted to kind of bring that out. So here I'm just kind of dry brushing some of this black on. And the biggest thing here, you don't have to have it perfect, perfect because I'm layering colors. So if I get too thick in areas like I have here, you can kind of fix that with your next layer of paint. But the biggest thing is, and something that is really hard to fix, is if you change direction. So you want to keep the direction of your paintbrush going the same way because you want this to look like uh, wood grain. So I'm just kind of dragging it across. It's a little harder on the inside uh, of the uh, outer edge but it works out just fine. So I'll go over this with one coat of, well, not one coat, actually just dry brush one, one coat on this. And, um, and that will give me the darker tones that I'm looking for when I do my next layer. So I went from that warm brown to this cooler black, and now I want to warm it up some more. So I'm using, this is actually one of my paint colors, one of the Dixie Bell colors called Pinecone because I really wanted to add another warm layer, but different. I could have went back to that same uh, color that I started with, but I like to add more dimension in the color. So I'm just using this color and going all over it. And again, just keep those uh, paint strokes in the same direction. And now after that layer, then um, I used just kind of a light tan color and I'm really dry brushing that on. I don't want very much paint at all. I'm just adding some highlights to, um, to the color and uh, just bringing out yet another layer of the wood grain look. So I went over it this with this on all of it. And again, keep the paint strokes in the same direction. And then once I did a layer of this, uh, then I used some of my brown glaze and watered it down about half and half and went over it with that. So I just brushed that on and wiped it off. Again, even wiping it off, keep those strokes in the same direction. And then once I got this covered with the glaze and wiped it off well, then I just took some wood glue and glued some feet on the bottom of it. Uh, I had cut up some spindles that I've had uh, to use on different projects and just used those as feet uh, and put those on the bottom. And then this tray was finished. And I was so pleased with how this turned out. It, it was exactly what I hoped that it would be. And again, the size was just perfect for my space. And then I wanted to make some items to go on that tray. I have some that I was going to put on it, but I want to make a couple to, uh, to add to that. 
So I had this, um, this bottom to a candlestick and then this little spindle. And so I'm gonna put the two together to make a, um, to make a base for a riser. And then I had this part of a bed spindle, which I think both of those came from the same bed. And I'm gonna use it uh, as a, just another little riser. So I first needed to fill in that little slit uh, that um, the uh, bed slat goes in. And I've just cut part of that off of that post and, um, and again, I'm just filling that in with clay and I'll let that dry and then paint this. And I painted two coats of the color buttercream. But now before I did that, I glued this mold on that I had made ahead with, re with resin. My friend Myra told me about resin and um, she is so right. It's, it's such a good idea to have these on hand so that you can add them to flat projects like this. And you don't have to wait on your your uh, clay to dry and you could just grab one and glue it on, which is what I'm doing here with some tight bond. And uh, so I just glue that over it. And then um, I did take this outside and spray it with a clear finish because uh, I knew that this is the type of stain that would bleed through to my uh, to my buttercream, through my buttercream, so I didn't want that to happen, so again, I just put a clear coat on it, and now I'm giving this two coats of the color buttercream, and then once I get this covered and let it dry well, uh, then I give this a, uh, I just take my orbital sander, actually, and give it a good heavy distress, because I wanted a lot of distress on this, and then I finished it off with a clear, uh, a clear coat to seal this paint in. I could use a clear wax if I wanted. Um, I just used a spray sealer on this one, but either one would work just fine. And then after I distressed it and put that spray sealer on it, then I'm using some of my brown glaze here and just putting it on this mold and then I'll wipe it away really well and I'm even using uh, a some of my clear wax to remove some of this because I don't want it coloring my my actual buttercream I'm all I wanted was to bring out the detail in that mold so as you can see that clear wax kind of acts as an eraser especially when you have a clear finish underneath and that's all that I did to that one, and it makes a riser for a small item, and I'm just gonna put a bird on top of it. And I just really love how that turned out. I thought about putting a top on it, a wider top, but I, I think I'm happy that I, I didn't do that. I just like this simple look. So I just and glued now, both uh, of these I'm gonna pieces work together. On my other uh, riser. Again, one is the bottom from a candlestick that I wasn't crazy about. The other is uh, part of one of the bed posts. Um, I just save those when they're damaged or someone doesn't want them and I cut them up and use the spindles and post for different projects. And this one is perfect for this one. So I just glued that on. And then I, I had a round plate that I think was the bottom to a riser. And I'm gonna be gluing that to the top of it. But first I'm gonna give this two coats of the color buttercream again and uh, let that dry well and give it a heavy distress and uh, put a clear finish on this. And then I'm gonna glue that wooden plate to the top and I'm not gonna paint it because I like the contrast from it. Uh, but I just, I really like how this one turned out as well. And now I can display them as a, as a pair and they look really nice together. And I love candlesticks, but, and I love risers, but I like it when you can uh, find some objects that don't generally go together and make them go together like this. And, um, 
and have a candlestick or riser that doesn't have to look like something anyone else would have. And here is how my centerpiece looked when I was finished. I wanted to keep it somewhat simple. And I also wanted to do this where when I wanted to change it out for a different season, all I would have to do is just change a, uh, make a couple little changes maybe in the floral in it and maybe an item or two add to it for that holiday. And I won't have to change that out. And then I also wanted to redo the decor on my on my coffee table in my living room. And the reason for that, the main reason, I guess, is because I want to keep it a little more contained so that my daughter's cat won't be as tempted by it. So I started with this cheap box that I thrifted. Um, I didn't have to pay very much for it, probably just a few dollars, uh, but it's that raw wood and um, it looks cheap. Uh, I don't mind that it is cheap as long as it doesn't look cheap. And I'm just noticing here as I'm voicing this one over that I said I used brown glaze on the last two items, but I didn't use brown glaze. I actually used brown wax. And I think I'm using the Krylon brand here because it's more liquidy. Uh, you can't water down the Dixie Belle brown wax. And so... Um, I, I was able to to water this down, and I also like the color of, of this. But uh, on this particular piece, I left it this color uh, to go over my tray for my large table. But for this particular piece, I, I didn't want it. It was this kind of wood was just grabbing to orange, I guess. And so I added some black, just regular black paint, to my antiquing wax and uh, so I just add some black paint to it and watered it down some more and until I got a dark enough color that I was happy with so I'm literally just putting some of that in there and this black is almost empty so I just used my brush and scooped some of that up in there and I uh, just kind of kept adding it like that until I got it the color that I wanted it. And um, I was real happy with how it turned out. So I just brushed that on and wiped it off. And uh, it gave me a good dark stained color. And it just made this look like it had some more age on it. And I guess I watered that, um, that wax down to maybe half water and half brown wax, and then added that black paint to it. So that was about how much I watered this down, I think. But just whatever works for you, I just kind of added until I th thought it was thin enough. And then again, I just added enough black till it, till it took enough of that orange out. And I didn't uh, stain the inside of it because I want to do some... Um, some decoupage on the inside and um, I, I was able to get some very old paperwork and um, I just kind of saved that for different projects that I might use it on and these are all just different types of receipts and so I'm going to use these to cover the bottom first uh, but I kind of want the theme of this to be roses so um, after I cover the bottom with the receipts, uh, paperwork that I just wasn't as attached to, uh, then I added a few other pieces to the top that were rose themed because there was some paperwork in this where uh, the person who had it had been in a um, in a garden club and they they did roses and different things like that, and so I have some paperwork that is specifically for roses. So I just kind of add that over the top after I get the bottom covered with these other receipts. And this orange one is actually a membership card for that garden club. And this is the point where I start adding some of the other, uh, the rose paperwork. And before I glued it down, I just kind of placed things the way I wanted them and then um, 
and now I can just add glue and glue them right where they are. Now I'm using a, a gloss Mod Podge here, which is not what I generally like to do, uh, but I didn't mind that this was on the inside of the box, so I didn't mind it being extra shiny, and I just felt like it gave it more protection anyway, so that's why I'm using the gloss here. And I just happened to have it because a friend bought it by accident and gave it to me. So I may as well use it up. But I was really happy with the look of this box once I finished. And now I think it's a good size to display my decor. So I wanted to do a coaster set next. And uh, I have these tiles that um, had been coasters at one time. And I just kind of painted over what was there. Uh, some of these have the little feet on the bottom missing, and I'm just going to take those off and replace those all together. But I've covered these with just an off-white color. I think I might have used buttercream here. I'm not sure. But I wanted a white base so that I could decoupage on these. So I'm using this um, tissue wrap that I got at Hobby Lobby. And uh, just so that I have kind of a neutral base because I'm going to be uh, decoupaging over that and kind of layering this up. So I thought that would be a good base. So I just cover it well. I didn't cut it to fit. I just covered it and kind of tore around the edges uh, so that once that dried, I could just uh, sand that the excess away and clean up the edge. So again, I'm just not cutting it. I'm just going to cover it well and worry about cutting the remaining off later. So once I get all those covered, then I'm just going to take, this is from one of the uh, Rose Garden books, and uh, I'm just going to um, tear some pieces off uh, of these and keep some of the titles so that um, it has that rose theme and um, just kind of antique around the edges and glue each of these in place. But I'm also going to be doing some uh, some rose clip art on it and I'm going to do the same thing with that. I've torn it out and um, and antiqued around the edges of it. So I'll just layer both of those on and do some script stamping in the back and um, and keep these pretty simple but I will have some layering on them and I'll have that vintage look and also the rose theme. Again I just did some script stamping in the background and then I layered both of these over the top of it and um, and now I'm just sanding around the edges to clean up those edges and then I'll use my antiquing ink and just slightly antique around the edges of these coasters and then I'll spray a clear coat on them to give them some extra protection and uh, and then that's all that I do to these. And then obviously I'll put some little felt circles on the bottom of these and um, now if I were going to sell these in the store which I'm not I'm going to keep them myself but if I were going to sell them in the store then I would just tie them together with some ribbon or twine and uh, present them that way as a set. And I'll show you what that looks like. But obviously, since I'm going to keep them, there's no use in doing that. So uh, I just tied them together uh, and just kind of crisscross some fabric and tied them together. And then that's the way I presented them. Then obviously you could add a cute little hang tag and that would make a, a really good gift idea. And if you can't find any coasters to redo, uh, Dollar Tree has these so um, you could get them that way and just cover what they have on them. Or even better, you could purchase some plain tiles at a hardware store and uh, make them from those. Now, I didn't want mine tied together, but I did want something to put them in. And I've had these little drawers. I have a couple of these. Uh, and they're very old. And the decoupage on the outside is very old. And I'm just going to remove all of it that I can. I want to keep this old look. So, I'm not going to bother trying to decoupage over it or paint it or anything. I'm just going to remove all of this that I can remove. 
and I use them just like this. I really like the look, so I don't want to mess with it any more than I have to, but I have to get all this loose off. And now I love the look of the vintage box, but obviously they're a lot more accessible than tying them together. And this is the little simple arrangement that, uh, that I put there. Um, I just put some fake flowers in a vase or a pitcher and then uh, that fake succulent plant there because if the cat does bother it, at least it can't really hurt it. Again, if I want to change it up for the holidays uh, or for other seasons, it'll be very easy. Now, today's hang tags are from British Columbia, Canada. And it's a couple of sisters, Debbie and Jocelyn. And uh, both of them made a couple of hang tags. Now, these are Jocelyn's. And um, I just love the vintage fabric and the stamp and postmark and uh all that shabby the shabby roses and the stitching that's something that i i never do to my hang tags uh just because i don't do well with the sewing machine or um i actually tear them up but uh, so i try to avoid using one and but i love the look and she did the stitching on this one also and I just love the look of this one. I love the round tag and again, all that stitching. And then on the back of this one, uh, she did some stamping with, it looks like maybe some gold ink. I just love the look of this. So those are Jocelyn's hang tags. And um, I just think they turned out so well. And then the next two are Debbie's. And, um, so this one is that venti shabby, shabby chic look that I like, and that's a raised frame mold. I love the look of that, and I love the soft shabby chic look of this. Uh, it's just a really pretty hang tag. And then on the back, the music and those uh, soft roses. I, I just think this one is so pretty. Again, it looks like maybe some stitching of some kind. Um, and then this one, I love birds and buttons and um, and lace, doilies, and there's another shabby rose. Uh, these ladies are clearly uh, very experienced at these. You would never know that hang tags could be done in so many different styles. And again, these ladies are so very talented. I just love how all of these turned out. And at the rate I'm getting these hang tags, it won't be long till my wall will be full of them. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.